and welcome to Food for Thought. I am Ramona Singh and bringing you a brand new show, Food for Thought, every Sunday at 10 a.m., 4 p.m. and 10 p.m. And joining me in studio is Yudhvir Jaswal, the group editor of Y Media. How are you today? I'm doing good, Ramona Ji. How are you? I'm doing fantastic and I'm very excited about today's show. And we're going to be talking about the law of attraction and the ways to actually implement the law of attraction. There's actually seven laws that pertain to this law of attraction and once when you uh, you know, do them the right way, as we'll cover it today, then you're bound to definitely meet your goal, which is to attract what it is that you desire into your life. Sure, and I'm sure our uh, viewers are going to really enjoy this discussion today because law of attraction, you know, uh, I think it does work. And uh, I know there could be many antithesis to it, which, which is always the case whenever you present any sort of theories. And I'm sure our viewers are going to enjoy it today. Absolutely. And so if you recall, remember those, the movie The Secret that came out, I think yes. now two decades ago, yes. that first uh, released the concept of what is the law of attraction. It's with your thoughts that things will manifest into your life and, you know, uh, having a visualization of it and speaking of it and thinking about it will bring you into your life. And then after a few years after that uh, movie came out, um, I guess a documentary more, more like it, uh, then people were like, hey, wait a minute, you know, it's not working for me. So, so now I think it's important to figure out what some of these laws are, because law of attraction is not just one law. And so when we say law, what we're talking about is in like a universal law, meaning like the law of gravity, right? You cannot go against gravity. You're here. Uh, no matter what you do, gravity supersedes any law that is man-made. So this is these laws that we're going to talk about today are not based on a jurisdiction like I live in Canada and I live in Ontario and Ontario has different like traffic laws than Quebec. It's not something that's amendable. It's not something that a human being has come up with where lawyers can go and dispute the legality of that law and a judge could decide the new meaning and the implementation of that law. These are universal laws. They were here before us. They will continue to be there after us and so therefore it's so important to know what these laws are so we can learn to work with them and get the most benefit don't you think uh, I completely agree with you and Ramonaji, I'm a very strong believer in the concept of uh, energy I've said that many times on uh, radio I've said that many times in TV as well I'm a very very strong believer in the concept of energy and when I say energy I'll take it one step further I'm a very strong believer in the concept of blessings uh, anything that has uh, happened around me throughout my life I think it's all because of blessings. Sometimes I feel, you know, miracles happening. Might, might be small miracles, but yes, they are. Because I strongly believe in the concept of energy, strongly believe in the concept of blessings, and I think you've given it the right technical term, the law of attraction. You're just not talking about thoughts and visualizations. Two point on thoughts and visualizations. If you really want your life to go in one direction, whatever you think, you will get it. I've, I've said this even at the cost of sounding repetitive, I'll say that again. When somebody asks me, have you, are you planning to enter into politics? I say, I haven't thought, I haven't thought about becoming a prime minister as yet. Because I, this is what I believe. I'm sure believe will be also one, one part of the law of attraction. If I, if I plan to join politics, then I have to believe it that yes, I want to become the prime minister. This is my thought. Anything which exists on this planet, I've given this example many times, like, where, where do you have a movie first? Where do you see a movie first? You see a movie first uh, in, the, in the mind of the director. The director visualizes this. He has a complete concept of that movie. That, okay, and then he, the script is written, then the casting is done, then the movie is shot, and then you see that movie in the theater. In this very studio, it, many times I've interviewed many, uh, you know, prime minister, cabinet ministers, all that is visualized in my mind. Like even before Justin Trudeau came into our studio, so they gave me a specific time of 20 minutes or 25 minutes. I had, this is my thing, I don't use any anything, right? So even before the Prime Minister entered the studio, I had done this interview in my mind, 20, 25 minutes. I had done this interview, okay, he'll enter, I'll ask him this question, tuck, tuck, tuck. Obviously, I don't know his answers, but I visualized that all in my mind and okay, the interview is done. He walks in, I asked the same questions, everything is in mind, so that in that 20 minutes, I cover all that. So that visualize, even before the final product came out of my 20 or 25 minutes interview with the Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, but I had visualized all that in my mind. The CN Tower, we are visiting CN Tower this evening, the CN Tower that we see today, the uh, NASA or, or aircrafts or anything that we see, see today, the railway systems, the transit systems, the highway, the, as a matter of fact, this entire um, 
you know, uh, world that we see today is basically an expression of our mind. All that was visualized, all that was conceptualized, it was thought in the mind and then I think we came up with all this idea. And just one uh, point which many people, if at all they're confusing, brain is basically a biological thing. What is mind actually? What is mind? Mind is nothing else but thoughts. Now I'm talking a little bit on the spiritual side as well or obviously on the psychological, I haven't read psychology, but mind is nothing else but thoughts. If, I, if somebody asks me what is, if we take out the thoughts, there's no mind. Mind won't exist. So whatever you visualize, whatever we think, that is what mind is. Yes, absolutely. The mind is the awareness of those thoughts yes. um, that, that we can observe. And so it, I think you actually very well described. So I'm going to go through, uh, I'm going to list the laws sure. and then you actually describe the first one very well. So the first one is the law of intention, the law of clarity, the law of emotion, the law of focus, mm -hmm. the law of detachment, the law of trust and the law of allowing. So essentially for um, when it comes to the law of attraction, there is two steps. So okay. there, I just listed seven laws, but those seven laws are broken up into two steps. First step is first set your intention, right? Mm -hmm. And then the second step is forget about it. Okay. And it sounds like it's counterintuitive because here you're doing all this effort and work to set something and then you're going to forget about it. But we'll go into detail about what that means and why it works. So the first law being the law of intention, it's what is your goal? Like what is it that you want to achieve? And like you said right now that uh, everything, like this chair that you're sitting on, somebody thought about it. That's why it's here. This building, somebody thought about it, right? So what is that goal? It's very important to be able to figure out what that is and then to be able to write it because when you are thinking about things that has a vibration in the cloud but when you write it you're actually cementing it in stone right you're bringing out the vibration into it and making it into real so so the main thing is figure out what it is so think about it then uh then to make sure that you write it down and then speak about it right because you've now made this decision because there's no decision without thought right so the the very important thing is what is that thought what is that belief so that's that's great that you talked about that yeah great point you know uh, I've said this many times when I uh, whenever I leave this world I think that if there is one thing uh, which I would want to be written right besides my name uh, it would be in the end uh, it are the intentions which matter the most so I think why I'm saying this because intentions are very important Today, if you ask many uh, youngsters, teenagers, nothing wrong with that. What do you want to do in life? I don't know. They'll sh just shrug their shoulders and say, I don't know. So, no, you should know that. Don't get overwhelmed, but intentions are very important. If I wouldn't have intended to become, uh, you know, a journalist or come in media, if my intentions were not clear, like I'm sure you're going to talk clarity of thought, but if I didn't have those intentions, I wouldn't have been here today. So make sure that intentions are very important because you're talking about law of attraction. Intentions are a very key element in the law of attraction. If your intentions are not clear to yourself first, the intention should be clear to myself. What do I intend to do in life? What do I intend to do right now, today, this week? What do I intend to do this month? What do I intend to do this year? And why? I'm sure you know ask that as well. Why do I intend to do? Because I, I wasn't enjoying, like, okay, I was making more money at a, at a point, not right now, but more money at a point as an engineer. It's making good money, good life, seven to three job. I never worked, I, I didn't really want to work too much of an overtime. Had, had a great life while I was working there, seven to three life, seven to three, you punch in, you punch your card out, everything is okay, going great. But intentions are very clear that why, I asked myself, do I really enjoy? I said no, waking up at 5 a.m. every day I say I'm going to work, no. I want, my intentions were clear, so first of all, Make sure your intentions are clear to yourself, then the law of attraction, this universe will listen to your intentions. So then you start showing your intentions and you do that. Whatever you intend to do, whatever your intentions are, you'll become that. Whatever your thoughts are, whatever your visualizations are, you will follow that no matter what, but there is another aspect to it. And maybe I'm not sure whether that's part of this discussion or not. With a true heart, this is very important because people, you were saying this thing earlier, uh, you could, I, I, hear, I hear this term a lot now these days, manifestation. I believe that everything is possible with a true heart. So maybe we'll discuss this under, uh, further. What is a true heart? If my intentions, my visual, visualizations, my thoughts are clear with a true heart, anything is possible. Whatever I ask, it will happen.
Yes, yes it does. So you described Law of Clarity very well, yeah. uh, which is to have, so now you've set your intention, you know what your goal is, now you got to have clarity of um, how do you achieve that. Before we go on, on yeah. to that, I want to ask you, just as I described my intentions, I want to listen to your intentions at any point in your life. Did you intend to do something or any, anything that is related to intentions, I want to listen from you. Yeah, absolutely. I intended to do a lot of things that I did. Um, I think, but before the decision of the uh, decision that I made, the goal that I had, I always had to ask myself, "What's your intention?" Because okay. I knew that the action of that uh, goal, the outcome of it, is only going to be um, equivalent to my intention. So, if, for example, uh, the act of, for example, let's say I donate, right? But I decide I'm going to donate at a gala and then I'm going to videotape it and then record it. I guess there's no videotaping now. It goes to show my age. <laughs> then you record it and then you put it on social media, which is fantastic because you're bringing awareness to a cause. But let's say my intention is to make the public or my circle of friends and acquaintances think that I'm so generous and, I'm, and, and, and my generosity is due to my how humble I am to share my wealth then my intention is not correct because it doesn't coincide with the generosity of donating without actually wanting recognition for it. Because if you want to donate something, you shouldn't necessarily be tied to the outcome of recognition to get something in return because that's a transaction then. I give you this, I get that back in return. I give you some money or whatever the donation is and I get back recognition, admiration and adoration and all those different words, right? And all those different feelings. So really, there's there's actually a line in the Bible that says um, from, so one hand, you're like, and I'm paraphrasing because I don't know it exactly by heart, uh, but the paraphrasing is, uh, the meaning of it is your left hand shouldn't know what your right hand has given away, right? So sometimes when you are donating, like don't count exactly, like, just give it, right? Sometimes I do that because I'm like, why should this hand, why should I calculate to put a figure and then to put it under my ego like oh look what I just did so so yeah so intention is very important because any action that I have has to have the right intention because if it doesn't have the intention that it's supposed to then that's what's going to be the outcome which is then it's not going to make me happy and then it makes null and void what my karmic you know contribution is very nicely explained uh, Ramona yeah I like I'll just quickly add another point to that you know there's always been a debate Whenever we see, you know, many people begging, of course, there's a debate that whether this person honestly needs a support or he's just made begging as one of his thing, you know, and he just wants to extract money. They, sometimes there's a question that we, we donate money and this person might go into drugs or is he cheating or wh what it is, right? So I think let's not really judge people. Mm -hmm. Do we have this 100% certification that this person is in need or not? So I think when we are donating, our intentions should be right. Absolutely. I agree with you. It's not about what someone is going to do with money you give them. Your intention has to be that I want to give it. What you do with it, whether you throw it out, yeah. whether you, you put it for good use or not such good use, that's up to you, right? That, I'm giving you something freely without strings attached, yeah. right? Because it's not a transaction that I will only give this to you if you use it this way so I feel good about it then that's the wrong intention. And quickly adding on to another point uh, on, on this one, you know, and whenever we are sharing, I won't even s use the word giving, whenever we are sharing something, be very grateful to God because God has put you in this position. There is no talent in the world. This guy could be more talented, more intellectual than you, much more knowledgeable than you because you are at a position right now that yes, you are able to share something. Who's, who's stopping God or this energy or this law of attraction or anything to put you in that place? You could be in that place and ask yourself, this is what I ask myself, what does it take to go and really beg from someone? What does it take? Yeah. This person is already in, in a very horrible position for whatever reasons. We're not, we're not in his shoes. We don't, know his, we don't know his whole life, what he's been through in his childhood what he's been going through right now, what are his family circumstances. There are hundreds of things and we could be acting even worse. We try to judge that this person will do drugs, this person will misuse this money. Okay, if you don't want to donate, that is fine, but let's not put ourselves on that judge seat and start judging anybody. If you want to donate or if you want to share anything, God has put you in a position, share it 
and then just be grateful to God that God has given it, put us in this uh, position. Please. Yes, so I want to just uh, wrap up the law of clarity. So therefore, you need to have a belief system. So it, first of all, you know mm -hmm. what your goal is because you know what your intention is. And then you have your clarity in terms of the steps you're going to take to achieve that goal. And you can chunk it like what we talked about in previous episodes when it comes to understanding what is the strategy, how are you going to implement it, all of that needs to go in place. And then um, also it's very important to have a belief. Like your, your goal has to be something that you believe in that you believe that you can do and you believe that it's part of something that's going to be constructive to you know the betterment of yourself or for your growth or whatever that goal is because without belief there is no action right so for example if i say something like oh yeah i'll 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 do that but if i don't believe it's really let's just say the right product right then how much effort am i going to put into an action yes. right so so belief supersedes the action and, um, and so that's, without that, you don't have the rest. So this is very important for clarity. Um, so now I want to move on to the law of emotion. So this emotion is, I think, this is one of the biggest things because a lot of people will have, you know, um, the, the boards that they set up, you know, they pin, you know, the different pictures of what they want to achieve their goal to attract it. They'll put the picture and we did say, you know, visualize it, write it, speak it. But none of that will mean anything unless you actually emotionally feel something towards it, right? So if you can um, sit and imagine what that would feel like, whatever your goal is, right? Like what you said, your goal was to interview the prime minister and you've done it so many times since the first time you even thought about it. And then you visualized, you went through what if it's actually happening? You went through the emotions of, okay, he's sitting uh, or she is sitting in, in, a, in the same space as I am. Here are the questions. And you went through it. It was your as if. Now, when you, you got to go a little bit further and you got to figure out your why, right? Because if you don't feel any emotion, so let's say you, you're lucky because you felt your emotion and it happened. But sometimes we want certain things, but then we don't really feel emotion. Someone says, feel it. And you're like, well, what do you want me to feel? So it, you got to realize that uh, emotion is energy in motion right and so if you don't feel anything towards your goal then you got to ask yourself why and keep digging deeper and deeper if your next why doesn't give you any emotion ask another why why this so for example um i want to you know i want to interview the prime minister well, why do you want to interview the prime minister well i think it'll be the highlight of my career well, why do you think it's going to be the highlight of career well then because it might justify you know how i feel about myself as a journalist well why do you have to justify that do you not feel like you're just go through the why 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 until you get to that core belief of like because i feel like maybe the core belief where your emotion comes out as you say because i believe that by asking the right questions the audience is going to connect to this individual who he's asking or she's asking for a commitment of four years to do what's right for canada to do what's right for this country to have a vision that's far beyond just a decade right like when you do family planning you're doing planning for a few years to a decade a person who's in the in, in, a, in an office who's prime minister should have a vision for the next century of where the country's supposed to go right like look at our like pension plans like that was that's a century plan right like there's there's you got to have like your free charter freedom of rights that's that's centuries right that's that's the constitution so you don't want somebody with like limited beliefs or short-sighted right so maybe part of the why would be i want to get that out of this individual so the audience my listeners and viewers it's as if they're asking the question and then maybe that gives you a sense of emotion now you've connected to your goal yeah. I don't know. I mean, I know I just stepped into your goal and I just <laughs> made a scenario around it, but I hope I did it justice. No, thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah, um, actually interviewing the prime minister was not my goal, but yes, I just took it as an example that yeah. how you visualize things. Because yeah. when I got this email that, okay, prime minister is coming to the studio, that's the time I started visualizing it. That's the time I started visualizing because because I didn't expect him to give an interview. They just, just suddenly send an email. And I started visualizing Prime Minister will come because that makes things a lot more easier. I'm saying the final product comes out. It should be good enough because uh, as much as I've interviewed, uh, I think six or seven times, I, I've lost the count now. But when he was here coming in the studio, so I thought I wanted to make it, uh, make the best possible use of interviewing a, a Prime Minister. So that's the time I started visualizing. Now you've highlighted two very important points uh, just now. I'll connect them and then I'll connect them with the law of attraction. And I'm giving, again, sharing my own personal experience with, with that. Clarity of thought is very important. Why clarity of thought is important? And then we'll connect it with emotions. And then we'll connect it how law of attraction works. 
So just in case for all our viewers, if you think I want this like Yudhvir and Ramona ji, they're both saying, whatever you think, you will get it, visualize it, think about it, and you will get it. Is it that simple? Okay, let's go, go through the steps. First of all, out of the millions of species on this planet, there are millions of species on this planet, what is it that you have different? That is intellect. There are millions of species on this planet, but they do not have the kind of intellect that the species we as humans have. Our intellect can help us in distinguish, differentiate, and even till a certain extent discriminate between so many different things. So intellect is one thing because we are one of the most evolved species on this planet. So our intellect makes us stand it apart. So how do we use this intellect? To have clarity of thought. What do we need in our life? Even before I start asking myself why this is not happening, I want this, I want this. No. Have clarity of thought. What is it that you want? Clear, clear cut that this is what I want in my life. This is what makes me happy. This is how I'm going to do it. Clarity of thought of everything. What I want in my life, this is what will make me happy, how I'm going to achieve it, these are the steps, write it down 10 times, 100 times, clarity of thought. Once the clarity of thought is there, that this is what I want in life, now comes the next step, as you were mentioning, the emotion. They say if you are going to ask anything with true heart, now how this heart will become true? Is there any gauge or is there any vaccine that you're going to inject and your heart becomes true? How, is, how will that law of attraction really start working in my case? Very ambitious, very ambitious, desperate for, for me to succeed, restless for myself to succeed. All these things were there. Heart was true. I thought it that way. But then what happened during the course of my time while I'm doing the same things over and over again? I'm the same Yudhvir working six days, seven days a week. As a journalist, I make my job is clear. Everything is done. Things were working till a certain extent, but what happened? Ambition became purpose. From ambition, it changed to purpose. Desperation, it became, okay, now I'm no more desperate. I'm at peace with myself. I'm at peace with my business or whatever it is. Restlessness, I became a lot more calmer. And let everything happen on its own. I said, okay, there is an energy. There are blessings which are coming away. Everything is happening. Let me not intervene the universal plan. Let me not intervene. Let the universe decide for me. And a true heart, okay, I started realizing, you know, I started being in a position of calmness, joy, peace, and more, most importantly, most importantly, no conditions attached for my unconditional love for everyone. <laughs> yeah. No conditions attached. Can you comprehend that? Yeah, I can. Because if, if you reach at that point, and I started getting a little bit of a glimpse of that when Saddam Hussein was, um, you know, given the death penalty. And I said it on air that year. That, you know, as much as I know what Saddam has done, people called me and they questioned me, Yudhir, you know what Saddam has done. I said, yeah, he's done horrific things in life. But no, we are nobody to take his life. It's I, I felt as if, as if you know this is a judicially this is a violent act that we are doing no we cannot take anybody's life we have no right to do that you can put him in prison or do whatever unconditional love there is no judgment at all for everyone who comes across you even if somebody has really wronged you and that is when i thought that everything started changing for me everything i started attracting great group of souls and who said that that i'm attracting great group of souls you said that mm -hmm. i have to say that so yeah i have to say. And yesterday night, after playing my badminton game, I was remembering your lines. After playing our badminton game yesterday evening, we all got together, we all sat down, and suddenly when I looked around, this is another family that we have created. We were around 10 or 12 people. And again, the thing that you said resonated in my mind, these are great souls around me. It's not, these are not players, badminton players. These are not our partners in badminton. These are great souls, and suddenly I realized how blessed I am. Whether I'm at work, whether I'm playing badminton, or even outside work and outside my plaything, there are so many great souls. Many of the, when I look at the people that I'm surrounded with today, these are all great souls. So I think unconditional love. When when I start, uh, when you start feeling that unconditional love towards the other, the fountain of love is flowing. Uh, when you do not have anything against anybody, 
I think I'm trying to reach that place. Maybe you're, you're not. You, uh, I'm sure you're going to describe that thing. We all have anger, greed, uh, lust, uh, uh, you know, attachment. So many other things within ourselves. They will not go away. We're not God, right? I, I do not want to claim that at all. They will always stay with us, and anybody can fall down any time in life. We're all human beings. But let's all strive to be in that zone and, and that's a zone of joy and peace and love when you are in that zone. And I think that's what attracts great souls. Please. I, you, you described the law of trust and law of allowing very well. Okay, sorry. Like so well. So that, and then, no, it's great because that's our second phase of, so now we're, we're still in the phase of setting your intention, right? Like setting your law of attraction, the laws that go with, which is law of intention, law of clarity, law of emotion. And then um, and one thing I want to say about law of emotion before we move on to the next one is that um, when you ask your whys to get emotionally charged with what your goal is, what you want to attract into your life, uh, Tony Robbins, if anybody hasn't had a chance to go see him in person, because he's still doing, I mean, he's the original uh, coach and, you know, uh, like in terms of making you self-help content, it's amazing. And I really truly believe that like, when these legends are still around, go and see them. Like I never got to see Michael Jackson before he died, right? I, I, I want to see Madonna. I haven't seen it, seen her. So if she has her concert dates, I'm gonna go. I would say the same thing for Tony Robbins. There's some certain legends that are just the originals and what they've done, and it's so amazing to be able to capture that in real life. But he talks about six core uh, needs that every human being has. Uh, one of them being love and connection, and we can do a whole episode on this. But I just I'm just gonna quickly go through that part. So one's our need for having love in our life and connections with other people like the souls in your life. That's connection that you've built. And then there is the law of certainty, right? Sorry, core belief of certainty, which is knowing that you're going to wake up tomorrow, you're going to be okay, you're going to have food, shelter, water, your basic necessities, you need to have certainty around them, feeling secure. That's very important. And then there's the law of variety, right? Which is I keep saying law because we're talking about laws. So these are core uh, needs. There is variety and the variety meaning that you, you don't want to eat the same thing every day. You don't want to maybe do the same exact thing every day. So you just need a little bit of variety, which is also contributes to the, uh, the core need of growth because he says if you're not growing, you're dying. Like everything around you is constantly growing and moving. The earth is, you know, rotating. The sun's rotating. You know, the seasons are changing. We're like, we're, you know, our biological clock is changing. So growing is a big part of uh, a, a need, a core need. And then, uh, then there's significance. You must feel, uh, because of connection with other people, you must have some level of feeling significant in terms of you, who you are as an individual, right? So that, that's a need. And then the final one is contribution, meaning, you know, you want to contribute to society, give back, because that's what makes you feel, you know, the most alive. And so if you don't know your whys, when you ask yourself the whys to get to emotionally charged with your goal, understand that it's going to come down to one of those six core needs that every human being has. <laughs> and I think you probably have something to say about that. Yeah, no, uh, as you were saying, I think emotions are very, very important. Uh, I'll, I'll just go one, one step further on, on this one. Our intellect, our intellect as much as it's, it's, it's a very strong and a powerful thing, but I think this is where our emotions come from and where do they sit? All these emotions that you were just now talking about, that all these emotions are in our, in our mind. And intellect helps us differentiate and distinguish it between what is right and wrong. So our, as much as we do understand with our intellect whether our emotions are right or wrong, because desire is an emotion. Mm -hmm. Desire is, is an emotion. And then peace, that's also an emotion. Joy is an emotion. Love is an emotion. So intellect helps us guide which are the right emotions that we should allow keep on flowing, greed, lust, anger, uh, or, or there are other emotions which are, which are not really good. And intellect helps us to distinguish, differentiate which way we should be going. And there are five nervous points in our whole systems, uh, whether it is anger, whether it's nervousness, whether it's anxiety, whether it's uh, greed, whether it's lust, these are all different nervous points. And if we let our emotions run on those sides, that will trigger that side. It's only with our intellect. That's why intellect is, is at the top. If we let our intellect make sure that these are the points, no, we should be channelizing. We can only channelize that. If 
But there is anger. Anger is coming. If we suppress anger, it will, there will be a time that it will blow away. So whenever we are angry, we just need to ask and channelize, where do I channelize these emotions? If I'm angry at something, why I'm angry? We need to think where this anger originated from. And I sure, I'm sure you've talked a lot, lot about this. At this point, I want to ask you one question. You just now mentioned that you would definitely want to see these legends as they're alive. And this was, this was my thing too. It's still my thing anyways. It's, I, I, I still want to do that. Why is that, if I may ask you that question? Because I feel like they've done the, one of the contributions to society yes, in terms of sh whether it's sharing their art, um, whether, you know, in Tony Robbins' case, sharing his, like, ideas for self-help to really help you understand yourself in many different ways. Like, th these are people who've made massive contribution. And, and if you've benefited just a little bit, right, by somebody's music or somebody's art or somebody's performance, um, you know, like, why wouldn't you want to see them? Why should you read about them, right? If they're still alive and they're in a place that you can get to, then it's always nice to have that memory. And, I, and I'll t say something really interesting. I think Expedia, the company, the travel company, um, has come up with the best commercial ever. Okay. And I, I think it's fabulous because uh, the, the gentleman the commercial talks about, he's like, he's saying, you know, stuff. Stuff is great to have. He's like, but... You know, it, when you're older or in the future, are you really going to say like, oh, I wish I had a thinner TV? Oh, I wish, you know, and he's like, you're not going to wish for stuff you didn't buy, but you will regret the places you didn't go. And I would add, you'll regret the people you didn't see, right? So you'll never, so, so what are you doing with your time? What are you doing with your money? Like, what are you doing with your resources, right? Is it just stuff you want? Because you're never going to regret not buying this stuff in the future. But we got to take a commercial break. We are talking about the law of attraction, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Food for Thought. Today we're talking about the law of attraction, essentially two steps in the process over the seven laws, which is first set your intention and then forget it. And so I know it sounds contradictory, we're gonna get into that, but the first laws that we talked about so far are law of intention, law of clarity, law of emotion, because wherever your emotion is, that's your, that's your emotion and energy, right? Where, where your feelings are, that's what's gonna really resonate. And now we have law of focus. And I know this is your favorite topic because you always talk about focus. But what's really important here is to understand uh, what it is that you want to do, first of all, with your intention and clarity and the emotions. But now focus on one thing because as you focus on it, that's where all your energy goes. If you notice um, you're focused on something, your energy is going that way, everything flows that way, and that's where you get results. When have you ever gotten results when you start 10 things at once? Right? I mean, when you started all the different platforms for TV, radio, newspaper, you started with newspaper. You worked on it until it was established before you went on to something else. You didn't start all of them all at once. Am I correct to say that? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And, and, and you know, even before I get into the law of focus, you know, uh, the previous laws that we talk about, they're very important. They're very important because first things first, we need to ask ourselves what makes me happy visualize, visualize that yes, this is what I would want to do in my life. Then ask yourselves all the good questions. What do I want to do? Have a clarity of thought before you set the focus. Because uh, if you're not clear what you want, you will not be able to focus as well. 
so have that visualization have those thoughts ask yourself great questions what makes me happy what do i want as my career what do i want to do in life what do i want to do for the next one month two months six months one one year what is my objective ask yourself all these questions that is what what's going to bring you the clarity of thought once you have the clarity of thought you finalized that yes this is what makes me happy this is what i want from life this is my short term this is my long term objective then fully focus on that particular thing as much as yes i did launch a print platform an online platform a digital uh, platform which you may call or a radio platform and of course this uh, 24 hour tv channel why but these was these were all related with media i didn't spread myself too thin because my focus was one and only one thing not was actually it is i mean from the last i would say almost 22 years now my single focus has been only on media i do not have any license at all i do not have a real estate license to fall back upon i do not have, have, have any insurance license so my single focus from the last 22 years has been media because focus is very important since we are attaching it to law of attraction today i'll connect it to that and then i'll come into other aspects of uh, getting yourself focused law of attraction we're all vibrating some sort of energy some sort of which we use so many other terms like aura we we, we have an aura around ourselves so we we keep on vibrating so my, if your focus is on one thing if you want to become the best uh, piano artist or the best guitarist or the best actor or the best director or the best player say for soccer player or a cricket player or the best journalist in the world or maybe a best uh, you know politician you want to become the prime minister of uh, any country or the president uh, of states your entire focus has to be there that's why your vibrations will be very high you'll be really radiating very high vibrations towards that focus and then you this universe will start listening to you this example has been used many times and of course we all did try to do this trick while we were in our school at at one time that yes what we what we did was this was in our physics as well i'm sure you everyone must have tried we used to pick up a piece of paper and here is the sunlight coming and we would use a magnifying glass and we will try to focus with that magnifying glass we'll try to focus on this paper and what happens when the entire energy through that magnifying glass is used on this paper the paper starts burning otherwise it's not so the same energy the same sunlight it's the same sunlight same energy but all you're doing it focusing it a lot more through your magnifying glass and here you have this paper starts burning very similarly when you are radiating something or when you are vibrating something at a very high energy this universe listens and the law of attraction it goes a long way absolutely and i think this is a right time to actually put up that uh the hertz model of vibration that we always refer to i think it's fantastic because um there are there is a degree in and there it is there is a degree in where you're vibrating right so if you're feeling shame you're like guilt uh apathy grief fear those that's where you're you're vibrating low and whatever you're vibrating and there's a measurement from 20 hertz to 100 hertz um that's what you're going to get back right it's is the law of attraction what you're putting out you'll attract right back you're going it's going to your 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 world mirrors how you feel on the inside right and then of course when you were talking about the other ones which is like love joy peace you're vibrating high so how do you get there right so now we've gone through you know how you set your intention your clarity your emotions your focus that's a strategy these are laws meaning they're universal they're not going to change you can't hire a lawyer who's going to you know go and argue on your behalf to find the gray area on how you misjudged any of these laws and then have a jury or a judge that will amend it for you know these will like this is it right just like law of gravity like we said there's nothing you can do just learn how to work with these laws so now the second part is you got to forget what does that mean so the under the forgetting part it's the law of detachment right so now you you got to trust the fact that you went through the strategies you did what you needed to do now you're going to set it aside knowing you've done your best right you've put out your goal it's all there you got your feelings you got your intention you got your action plan now the law of detachment is uh very important because if you're always focusing on that outcome of like i want to get that i want to get that whatever that goal is then all you're doing is you're now vibrating in that low that hurts model where you're now under desire right and when you're not meeting your desire then you go to anger so so desire is at 125 hurts then and then anger is at 150 
what does the world give you? It gives you more of that, right? So it's very important to, to look at that and know. So, so when you're attached to an outcome that you're not getting, what you're saying to the universe is, I don't have. I'm resisting my abundance because I'm just always in the feeling of not having enough and I'm in lack. And then the world gives you more of that. And that's why you don't get that desired outcome. Again, the same thing as we were mentioning earlier as well, you know, clarity of thought. So clarity of thought is very important and then the focus and of course uh, when you uh, this will help you in getting detachment because there is one plan even if you're not uh, a believer uh, but, but I think those who believe in God who have uh, faith-based uh, systems going on they will definitely believe in this one that yes there is a plan which God has uh, there is a plan which this universe have just in case you're not a believer you know then you could always believe at least in energy because energy is is a scientific term E is equal to mc square energy can neither be created nor be destroyed it can only be transformed from one form to another so energy universe or god whatever you believe in they all have their own plan and i think once we try to intervene in their plans there is a time then yes we of course we can intervene of course we can try to make things go our way but this universe doesn't operate as per our wishes mm -hmm. universe has its own laws universe has its own way of wishing and when we say we are at peace. What does this mean? We are at peace. When we say we are at peace means we we'll let it happen. We we'll let it happen. There is a, whether you want to call it God, whether you want to call it a supreme power, whether you want to call it universe, whether you want to call it energy, let that happen. So that is where you detach yourself. Absolutely. And I think you led us really nicely into the next law, which is the law of trust. Okay. Right. So what's the opposite of trust? It's fear. Yeah. Right. It's not mistrust. I, I, I think mistrust comes from fear. Yeah. But the core opposition to trusting something wholeheartedly um, where you don't have to worry because you trust in it is fear. Fear is worrying about things. And, and so fear, what does that give you? That gives you again at 100 hertz. It gives you low vibration. And, uh, and what are you actually fearing? Are you fearing that you, don't, you can't control the outcome of what your desire is? Now, again, you're trying to control it because now you're attached to it. You haven't detached. And, and the fear, essentially, what it does is it brings you in the low vibration. But then you got to ask yourself a question. Uh, like you said, this universe has its own laws. Like the seasons are going to change. You don't decide when it's winter. You don't even get to decide when the sun comes up, if it's going to be a sunny day or a cloudy day, right? And you're sitting here and think about the amazement of like c creation as a whole. Like you don't have to think like, oh, I need to blink right now. Okay, I need to now breathe in. Now I need to breathe out. Now I need to answer this question. Now I need to this is all just actively happening you you ate a breakfast today your body is digesting it it's doing what it needs that's creation at its perfection people have their own fears you know and everybody has that by the way i have my own fears uh, you know uh, i can't watch horror movies actually i can but but the, the thing is if i watch horror movies then uh, not that i'll stay up all night i'll sleep i might have a nightmare or something like that you know you feel trauma i feel feel, feel yeah. the trauma yeah maybe yeah. you're using the right word i, I maybe i feel the trauma so I'd rather not watch, watch horror movies and then I'll say, okay, well, I mean, movies are for entertainment, so why watch a horror movies? <laughs> and then maybe a day or two goes by like that, thinking about that movie, not in the daytime, but of course in night as well. That yeah. happens with me. So we all have our own, there's no one in the world, I doubt, that doesn't have its fears. Uh, but, but I think the most important part is that how do we channelize our fears? And I think your, uh, this graph, I really love this. Why? Because not only it highlights all those challenges, I've always, I won't call them as weaknesses or limitations, I will call them as challenges. Not only this graph, it highlights, it highlights all the challenges which everyone has, whether it's, uh, thank you for uh, showing this graph in full screen, whether it's the shame, whether it's the guilt, whether it's the grief. Yes, of course, we will be grieved at one time. Of course, we all have desires, anger. Pride is not a bad thing, but then you have courage. And then you go, as you go up, courage, neutrality, willingness, acceptance, reason, love, joy, peace, and enlightenment. Of course, we can all, all, all have that. But, but I think we all should strive to be in that upper zone most of the time and not being in that lower zone of guilt, fear, anger, desires. Uh, and, and till a certain extent, you know, I realized that a few years ago, as much as I always thought that being... I'll, I'll still say for the teenagers, be ambitious because you have to <laughs> do a lot of things. But eight or ten, nine years ago, you know, when I heard that uh, passion, Buddha Ji says that, passion is one of the biggest fire. As much as I thought, follow your passion, follow your passion. This is what most of 
the things that I thought and I thought passion is my strength. But from passion to compassion, mm -hmm. from passion to compassion, from from nervousness or fear to, you know, uh, getting excited. Because fear, nervousness, anxiety, they all come from the same part of the brain. So as much as I, w I must confess this, this is for uh, the benefit of our viewers. At one time, I was even still dead. Till date, I'm still a bit, little bit nervous when I'm going on stage or I'm facing the camera. Yes, I am. T till date. Uh, but yes, there was a time when I was a little bit more nervous. I was, I thought, oh, I'm great. The first time I faced camera, maybe 20, 20 years ago, I said, I'm great. But then when I saw the recording, I could see my face a bit conscious. And after two, three months, this I'm talking 20 years ago when we, we had those handy cams. Then I started practicing in front of a handy cam. My wife, Preeti, she got me, uh, st you know, to do a practice in front of a handy cam. But we all have our own fears. We all have our own uh, challenges, which I think we can all overcome. Uh, and I think, uh, Ramona ji, do you uh, fear death? Do you? I don't. No, no, not at all. I want to listen to that. This is this is this is an amazing thought that Ramona ji just said. She does not fear death, and I'm sure there are many who fear, and there are many I've come across many who do not fear death at all, which is a great feeling. And this is one of I mean, the, there are hundreds of fears that you could have, but this is an amazing feeling if you had you do not fear death. I want to listen it. How do you? Why why are you saying you don't fear death? I want to listen in detail. Sure, yeah. I mean, I, I fear how I would feel if my parents, loved ones close to me were to experience death, were to die, because I fear how I would feel about yeah. missing them and loving them and no longer being able to communicate with them, even though they never go away. Energy cannot be destroyed mm -hmm. um, and their soul is energy. Uh, but for me personally, like, do I fear me dying? No, because um, it's written the way I'm supposed to go, so I can't control it, I can't prevent it, I can't do anything about it, which is really the law of trust. The fact that I didn't choose to be born, like I didn't control what time I was born, to what family I was born in, to my gender, I didn't, I didn't control that. Maybe on a, on a, if you believe in reincarnation, on a soul level, there's some of those ideas, but you know, I, I, I didn't I don't I didn't make any of those choices therefore I, I can't control the way I'm gonna go and also I know it's not gonna be painful like when the moment I die I'm not gonna feel the pain because I think I fear pain more than um, you know so I th so so I canceled that out and my thought process I actually thought about this and then the other thing is it's my rebirth into the afterlife right and and anything I've read about the afterlife it's it's supposed to be far greater than what we're experiencing here so um, yeah, I mean, it's it's a rebirth to the afterlife. And you said something interesting when you said, you know, like the child in the womb, when they're coming out of their mother's womb, they think they're going, they're dying, but now it's a rebirth into this world. And so it's a cycle that continues. And so, yeah, I have no, none of those feelings. Yeah, and, and, and I think there are many people who do not fear uh, death because as you said, you believe in after life after birth, you know, uh, so you'll go to that nice space. That's your strong belief. And this also highlights your positive thinking. And that is what uh, many people have done with their faith. Uh, many times people ask me, Yudhvir, you're a science student. And uh, they say, there's no such thing as God. I said, you know what? what? Let me tell you one thing. There may, let me not really judge anybody or let me not take away the faith from someone. If someone is believing in God and they think that whenever their sufferings are there, God is with them. If the, and we're talking about death, whenever anybody passes away, it, you know, God is with them. So faith is one of the biggest healers for millions of people. So let's not, not take away. I think the worst thing that we could do to someone is again the best thing that we could do to someone. What is that? The best gift that we could give to someone and that could be the worst gift as well if you take it away. That is hope. Yeah. The best gift that, I, I think this is what I realized many years ago and I made sure if you are able to give hope to someone, if you are able to inspire someone, if you are able to motivate someone, do this. This is the best gift because that hope, that motivation, that inspiration, any good thoughts that you pass on to somebody, that'll, that will stay for them for some time rather than giving any materialistic gift. And if you take away that, if you take away that, if you are spreading hopelessness, I see a few people with the utmost respect, I'm saying that. Whenever they talk, they'll say, this is bad, this is wrong, this is wrong. So I tell them, this, will, this was always the case. This was always the case. Show me a moment in the history, whether there was when Ashoka fought the Kalinga War, 150, 
hundred fifty thousand people died, wasn't there hopelessness? We had droughts, we had so many things, we didn't have the technology at that time. So if you're mentioning two, three things, this is what's happening in the world, this is what's happening in our country, this, this has always been the case. So let's not spread hopelessness, hope, positivity, that's what we need to do. Absolutely, and I want to say two things um, to nicely wrap up the law of trust, which is you, what you said is, um, you know, if you have a fear or something, practice it, right? Because right. it's something that you don't know, it's not your comfort level, and when you do something uncomfortable, obviously, uh, it's, it doesn't feel so good, but the more you practice it, the more you do it, then you become comfortable with it because now your identity shifts into what you want to be, which is before you know, but before that goal, like such as public speaking, if it's something that you want to be a public speaker, but then of course it's very nerve wracking. Yeah. And it is one of the top fears of people actually, public speaking. But the more you do it, the more you lean into it, the more comfortable you become, right? So therefore that fear gets eliminated. But I also want to talk about um, if not eliminate, it'll be reduced. But I do want to talk about your subconscious, right? So, so you have programming in there that was there from the time of your birth till the age of seven where you hypnotically took in all the programming of what you saw about, you know, in your home, in your society, as what love is, what friendship is, what, you know, all the values that you essentially have. And so therefore, also, some of the fears you have could also be programmed in that in your subconscious by other people's fears so if you had parents or elder siblings or you know elder family members who are fearful of something and all of a sudden you're like you fear it too well that's because you were subconsciously trained so figure out what that is and you got to be able to work that out and 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 actually you know not borrow other people's fears because essentially that's what happens when your subconscious is programmed not by you yeah and and, and as we've discussed in earlier episodes as well it can easily be reprogrammed your subconscious yeah. mind, that, that's the best part. It's not like something written on the wall. It can easily be reprogrammed. So we can reprogram that. It's a that. software update yes. to the hardware of your brain. <laughs> that's and, right. And then, um, okay, so the law of allowing. So this is the final law, which is you have to allow what's happening in life. Because A, you've decided you're not going to control it. And then you've decided you trust that you were here and you have a purpose in this universe and this universe is greater than you. It was there before you, it'll be there after you. So therefore now you gotta allow it. So what are the two options, two outcomes that could happen? You have this goal, you've set your intention, you have clarity of thought and the actions to go with it. You have your emotional, or you're charged about for this goal that you wanna attract into your life. You have focus and you're doing what you can. And you said, you know what, I forgot about it because I detached from the outcome that's what I mean by forget about it, not forget about your goal, but you've detached from getting it because you're saying it's going to happen on its time because I'm doing everything I'm supposed to. And then you trust in everything and also there's two scenarios when the law of allowing. One, it won't happen the way you thought it's going to happen. Maybe you get some challenges, maybe, you know, some mishaps, things that you didn't, you know, think that would happen. Um, and then, you know, the main thing about that is that you just got to be able to observe it, allow it, because universe is, you're always on time. You're never early, you're never late. Everything's happening at the right time in the right place for your eventual growth, for your greater understanding, for, for you to have better strategies in terms of learning these things and having emotional maturity to go with it. And then when it's, it's time, because the universe, like you said, it doesn't operate on your time. So for example, we have 24 hours in a day, we have seven days a week, we have 30 or 31 days. If it's a leap year in a February, it's you know 20 odd days. So that's what we came up with as human beings. The universe is not counting you know 60 seconds a minute to say, hey, I want my goal in three days and six hours. It doesn't work that way, right? Everything is, you know, if you're if you're vibrating at that magnetic energy, then you immediately have it. Now you're vibrating in that in that frequency. So, so, so that's one outcome. The second outcome is you actually get, you actually attract what you want, right? The other way is saying, hey, wait a minute, maybe it's not uh, right now for you. We're gonna get you to it so you're ready when you get it, right? Because what is success? Success is when opportunity meets preparedness, right? So if I want to be successful, for example, I say, hey, I want to have, I want to have an English channel, right? But if I'm not prepared, Here's the opportunity, but I didn't really prepare myself. I decided I'm not going to do any shows. I'm scared of the camera. I don't publicly speak. <laughs> I don't read. I can't articulate myself. I have the opportunity. I'm not going to be successful, right? So prepare. So success is when opportunity meets preparedness. 
And uh, so that's very important to be able to do that. And so, so sometimes when it does, so I say, you know, I want to attract this channel to myself, right? And then, and then also it's not working out. It takes maybe longer, maybe it takes five years, it takes eight years. But all those things I went through was to prepare me for that opportunity to be successful. And now let's say the second option is you get it. You got to also acknowledge you got it by celebrating and being happy, right? You got to vibe high. So you want to be in joy. You want to be in love. You want to be in peace. You want to have all those things, right? And then there's also accepting the fact that you got it. Because sometimes when you realize that, hey, I wasn't prepared and now I have it. And now I got to prepare really fast. So that is a, to sum up these laws that really, you know, take you through the process of attracting things into your life. So I'd love to hear what you think of that. Yeah, I think you've uh, articulated it so well and summed it so well. I think uh, there isn't much to left now uh, to talk. But but I think, uh, because I think you, this is something towards the end that you were just sharing. This is some, some of your personal experience. Uh, I could feel that. I could feel, feel that vibe. Uh, all I can say is, yes, uh, what was the biggest loss of my life, if I, if I want to say that? The biggest loss of my life was when I lost my father. That was my biggest loss. Now, they always say, uh, God does everything for a reason. So people would ask me, what's the reason? You know, why would you take my dad away? What is the, what's the reason for that? Everything happens, happens for good. What's good in this one? What's good in this? But at the end of the day, this is how I channelize the stuff. Until date, I always feel that my father, maybe not physically or biologically, is not with me, but I always feel he's always there with me. So there could be two things. I could live in the past, then that would have brought me in that graph in the bottom rain, there is grief there in the bottom, there is sorrow and there is maybe guilt or so many other, other things there, uh, there. But then there is peace there at the top. So if I, I have to be at peace and allowing you know, your part, this is how this universe works and this is it as its own laws. Once there was a lady and uh, she, she lost her child and she went to Lord Buddha Ji and she, uh, she says, everyone praises so much about you and you can do anything. So I've lost my kid. And I'm sure you can bring it back to life. Lord Buddha Ji said, yes, I can bring it back to life. She says, wow, I already knew that. You are the person who do that. Now everybody is watching how Buddha Ji will do that. Buddha Ji said, you know what, uh, if you can go to anybody's house and uh, bring a bucket of grains, but make sure you bring the bucket of grains from that house which has never seen a death. So she said, okay, fine. She went on around the village, but everybody said, no, somebody passed away. Yes, we've seen death. So the... She suddenly realized there is some message for me. She came back and Buddha Ji gave this message. Like we're talking of law of attraction, the universal laws. So Buddha Ji gave a very clear message in that thing. This is the law of nature. This is the law of universe. That anyone who is born, they will die. Anyone who is born, they will die. So allowing, allowing the law of nature and accepting that and being at peace, it's very important. Absolutely. And you know, I've, I've heard this and I do believe this that now, you know, I'm sorry you've lost your dad, but now you have an angel who you know by name. Yes. Who's in your life. Yes, definitely. And that's where you're connected, yeah. That's where I'm connected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right. And uh, I, I, I think it's, it's fantastic in terms of what you said about, you know, allowing all these things to come into your life and being prepared for it. Um, but I think the be beauty of all of it is that it just helps you navigate to what you need to do for your greater purpose and to be able to you know, have that goal in mind. But I do want to say one thing, I, and it came up previously, and I, and I, and I, and I really want to share this. So we were talking, you know, with our team, and then somebody said, well, how do you attract the right partner into your life, right? And then, so what does that partner look like? So let's just say you go through the process, you say, okay, well, what's my intention? I want, to, I want a partner in life, you know, that I can love, that loves me, that there's trust, and all those wonderful things. You have a clarity of mind in terms of, like, who this person is, what are their attributes, what are their personalities, all those different things. Then you have emotion attached to it, like how am I going to feel when I'm with this partner, right? And then, and then you have your focus in terms of like, well, if I want to meet somebody who, you know, does this for a living or likes these hobbies, then maybe I wouldn't focus on doing other things that would prevent me from being in the same space and having the same hobbies. And then you go into the law of detachment, which is, well, I'm not going to say I'm going to get married in like six months and, you know, six days and six hours, right? That's, that's attaching to an outcome, which you have no control over because it's going to work when it's supposed to because you did everything else the right way. Then you have the law of trust, knowing that uh, as, you know, you didn't uh, know when you're going to be born, you don't know when you're going to die, but you know that seven and a half billion people 
there's somebody for you. Maybe yeah. there's more than one person for you. You're going to get along with people, that's for sure. Yeah. And then you have the law of allowing you, you let it come in. But here's one thing that I think I want to add to that is you have all this stuff for the person. Now look at yourself and say, everything I want for that person, am I, do I have everything I need for that person to want me back? Like that, what, what is success? It's, it's opportunity and meeting preparedness. Right? So when I said, oh, the English channel, if I can't read and I don't, you know, I don't do my homework and I don't really have any thoughts about current affairs or things I want to talk about and I'm too scared to look at the camera or to do any you know, things on stage, then I'm not prepared. So same thing for that partnership. Are you prepared to be in a partnership? Are you prepared to meet the personality that you're going to come against to be as good as that? In return, not this is not a one-way scenario where you want the perfect partner just for yourself, but there's nothing to change for you and nothing to prepare. So I just wanted to add that, that I think might be helpful for some of our viewers and listeners. Yeah, I think you summed it very well. Great points. And I think this begs a complete show on this one, yeah. that how uh, you should be prepared. Because that's a very key point that you yeah. just mentioned, how you should be prepared uh, for uh, while you're anticipating uh, any partners in your life and how, what do you want actually? Are you, there, is, there should be clarity of thought. What are your thoughts? Is there enough clarity of thought that this is what I want in my life partner? Because life partner, as I mentioned many times earlier as well, 90% uh, of your time you'll be spending with your life partner or your career. So these are two things. Uh, we haven't uh, spoken about life partner. How do you find an ideal life partner? And I think you highlighted another very good point today that you should be prepared. Once you get it, once you get it, maybe you could lose it. Yeah. And, and that could be another yeah. ca cause of sorrow and grief for you. So better be prepared at that time and better have clarity of mind. So you would tell it more, how do we prepare ourselves? I want to listen to that. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm quite excited to listen to that. How do you prepare yourself for that? <laughs> we'll talk about that on the next show. We've run out of time. It was a pleasure to be with you today talking about the law of attraction and always a pleasure to hear your thoughts and experiences on this topic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ramani. Thank you. Please. Until next time, please join us every Sunday for Food for Thought uh, as we air a brand new show only on Channel Y. Thank you and be well. Thank you.